Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to our chat. Um, my name is Margaret Spiker. Um, I'm a map scientist and a tech coordinator for a company called Zenity Corporation. We're GIS and government contractors in Denver, Colorado. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Diane Fritz, who is an earth and geospatial scientist, also based in Denver, Colorado. Um, Today we're going to talk about the landscape of the geospatial community for OSM Colorado and uh, with that um, the opportunities and challenges that we face as we embark upon a project called the Denver Regional Metro Region Buildings Import. Um, some of you joined us for the more technical side of this chat yesterday so um, hopefully this will clarify a lot of the confusion from yesterday. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I guess I'm half kidding because there was uh, some good feedback. <laughs> um, so of course, uh, we couldn't do the project without community is the name of the talk. And um, it's not advancing. So one of the uh, good feedback was um, just real basic, what are we doing? <laughs> so very, very basically, um, we have uh, building footprints, high resolution building footprints that we've merged with an uh, address layer. And that address layer uh, comes from the state of Colorado GIS department and the uh, high resolution building footprints come from a regional council of governments in Denver, which we lovingly refer to as Dr. Cog. And so the Dr. Cog imagery on the left, or snapshot on the left, shows the building footprints. The one highlighted in red shows an overlap to the, the middle, which is what is existing in OSM for that space. So you can see, so in that case, we copy the attributes. We don't delete the building. We don't remove anybody's history edits. We just make sure that the attributes get added. Um, it is planimetrics data, so we have height coming in for all the building, um, including sheds and garages. Um, and, uh, and then in the, the final scene is the, um, the merged buildings in with the OSM data. So very, very high level. That's what we're up to. Uh, something in the neighborhood of 1.5 million buildings, nine county metro region, uh, lots to do, lots of opportunities to help. So um, if you've heard me speak at all, I love uh, esoteric things, so I always start there. Um, but uh, I really think that the concept of community is a reflection of the pulse of the city. And we make maps of locations. Um, these are just three, uh, you know, a zoning, a transit, and a heat map of food deserts. But um, you can envision that all things, uh, as we're all geographers here in some fashion or another, uh, exist as patterns and flavors across the city. And um, the geospatial community is, is very much um, that way. If I, um, always if I had had more time, if I had another 24 hours in the day, uh, I'd have a really cool map of like all of our hubs and our meetups and stuff. But this is really gets to the point that, um, that uh, it truly is um, the scene of the place. So talking about the scene is what I'm going to start with, but we're going to go over the Colorado landscape, all the people that are involved, the groups um, talk about our relationship with public data and people that work in the government, and also talk about um, some individuals that are part of this project, and then how trying to get all of this together and organized to actually do this import and, and the interesting challenges of that is um, a lot of what our talk is about. So the scene in Colorado is great. We do all sorts of different kinds of things. These are um, some shots from some importathons and and working on different projects. Sometimes we'll look at geopandas, which is what we were doing here at the map time here, or we'll go skiing and take real data in the field, depending on what people are feeling like. So we're all over the state and we love GEO. Our import project is just on the front range, but there are a lot of people all over the state that can get involved um, remotely. So this is on the Western Slope 
out by Grand Junction, and there are working spaces going up there and all sorts of geo hubs that are getting developed in that space as well. So this is a quick look at some of the meetup group um, things that we have going on on the front range. And I am um, deeply involved in a lot of these, which is why this slide is under my purview, I guess. <laughs> but I help um, Jennings Anderson, who was speaking yesterday, run Map Time Boulder. I also run Map Time Mile High, which I coordinate with Geospatial Amateurs, which is this marvelous group. And we, they do more talks and we do more hands-on work. And it's really great um, having that, that cross, like here, get an idea, and then come do hands-on tutorials. And then of course, we have our OSM Colorado group, which has many, many people leading it and adding all kinds of statewide projects. So this is just an example of our recent calendar of what life looks like in Colorado. So we're here at um, the State of the Map conference. This is just kind of my own little personal calendar. But Geospatial Amateurs just had a meetup where they did some amazing talks about using Blender. And there was a, um, a person from the Snow and Ice Data Center because we have all sorts of amazing earth scientists on the front range coming and talking about using LIDAR data for um, snow uh, measurement depths. And then we had a um, map time mile high about building an open space geo, ge open source geospatial stack. Anyway, the, and then we have GIS in the Rockies conference. This is just to show that there are a lot of things going on in the calendar and OSM data gets involved in a lot of these projects. So the geospatial amateur stories is just kind of an interesting one that shows how many active people are around. But some amazing people started it a long time ago. Brian um, Timoney, Peter Batty, and Nate Irwin. I joined this right when the venue that they have called Fado, which you can see that's where they had this one that got crossed out. That pub closed and they lost where they were going to meet all the time. And I never got to go there and it just disappeared for two years. But then Brian Timoney was like, we're back. And all of a sudden, 66 people just showed up at this meetup because it has such strength of interest. Um, this is uh, Sean Gorman talking about using um, LIDAR and photogrammetry data for making a um, high surface accurate um, spatial data layer. But it, was, it got ramped back up. And like I said, they had a talk about Blender. So we're going to be doing some Blender stuff in the next uh, map time mile high that we have. So OSM Colorado has a lot of different organizers, including Margaret Jennings, myself, um, Russ Defner, and we'll talk about people more directly. But the idea about this is it's been around for a long time. And so this photo down here, um, you'll, you'll see Jimmy again later in this slide, but this is back from 2011. So we've been having meetups and, and that community building for a while. So we also have a lot of different locations where we have these. Um, this is a lot of just snapshots from in Denver, um, Inglewood. Um, we did an importathon in Boulder and coordinating with Mapillary to do some other ones. So a lot of different types or locations for the events. And then a lot of different types of events have been happening in OSM for a long time as well. So we'll get out in the field. Um, have edit-a-thons in the winter when it's cold outside, um, go to small towns and just go on hikes to like pull some good address data, very varied and again, all over the state. And, and cake, we'll make birthday cakes because we like eating that. So we have um, a lot of outdoor things as well, like the skiing, that this is some of the data that we'll collect there. But that's the overview. Yeah, we're very, very fortunate for our community in Colorado. It, it is a good scene. We're thankful for it. Um, so uh, 
Next up is talking about the public relationships that are help fueling the project. And um, so that term govies is one that I uh, use with um, much endearment and, and love. Um, so uh, to start, um, we want to highlight Ashley Summers. Um, she is the, uh, make sure I get her title right, um, the information systems manager for Dr. Cog. And really, she's the uh, relationship broker amongst the nine counties and all of the municipalities in the metro region. She gets them on board with uh, helping to pay for it, which is probably one of the most amazing feats that she does. Getting, you know, government to contribute money to another government agency is like, Let's give her a round of applause, you know. <laughs> um, but she also manages a number of other data layers. And the snapshot at the top is just our nine county metro that we're working on. Um, and the um, the DRAP, as it's called, the Dr. Cog Regional Aerial Imagery Program. I forgot another P, but um, that program is a every other year program. So right now we have imagery for this nine county region going back to 2012. And they'll do the next flight in 2020. We also have a, a very cool geospatial information officer, and uh, he's also the chief data officer for the state of Colorado. He's, uh, the, I think, the only government person I've ever seen present and include an entire slide dedicated to the Big Lebowski. So when I talk about him, I always refer to him being the dude, and he abides. And um, so in the bottom left is the snapshot of the address layer, statewide address layer that he maintains. Um, and just uh, a couple of fun photos because he's a super goofball and he's great. Um, but he's also um, very supportive of uh, geospatial in the region. Obviously, he's the GIO. And um, so he's going to be pretty instrumental when we get finally to the phase of um, how do we do changes and, and uh, you know, what is complete, that kind of thing. So also um, within our community, the, um, the city of Denver is, um, a, has a really great uh, open data and uh, geo office. And um, the city of Denver, um, they very recently added north to all of the cities above the south north-south divide. And so um, our mission is to map what's on the ground. Uh, and this poses a really interesting challenge because they're not going to go out and update all of the street signs, but all of their downstream uses and all of their routing that's built off of their data will include the north. So we have a big discussion ahead of us as a community about, um, you know, adopting the north as the city is doing means that we're going to stray a little from that what's on the ground. Um, so, or at least obviously you can see where I land on that, <laughs> but uh, we're going to have the discussion as a community about what we want to do about that. Um, but certainly the, the guys at Denver are, um, you know, really interested in what we're doing and, um, and they support us in any way they can, at least right now with the information about, you know, just letting us know what's happening with the data. And then another, uh, community in our... Um, region is Jefferson County and uh, up until very recently they had a pay model for their all of their data but you know specifically addresses and parcels so um, for at least this phase of it when we ran a merge on the addresses we didn't have any addresses for Jefferson County because we didn't have like two hundred thousand dollars to buy them so um, so now that there's been uh, some change in leadership there, we're hoping that going forward they're going to start making that data available so we don't have to go out and um, extract all those addresses using Mapillary. <laughs> Um, so also in our community and for the project, we've had uh, support from private companies. And so speaking of Mapillary, um, they have supported us in many ways, uh, and, uh, including hosting, uh, co-hosting meetups and uh, coming and, uh, you know, engaging with the mappers. Um, but I think one of the most um, hilarious things that they support us in is allowing our crazy desire for pedestrian scale mapping. <laughs> And um, the blue hurricane circle is me with my camera doing a spin move, not realizing that later in the path that people would follow as they like, you know, digitally walk through where I went, that it also does a spin move. <laughs> so <laughs> they're real supportive of our like, you know, I'll just say uh, esoteric ideas. Um, so 
Uh, we also have uh, pledge support from um, Digital Globe and Mapbox. Um, they have sponsored meetups thus far, and um, we will be taking more advantage of their support when we get our act together to be able to do that. But they've been super supportive. Um, and so uh, really the, um, the, the overview of this is um, to show the variety of all the people that we have. So, um, and being able to track to their strengths. So um, we do lots of different types of meetings so that we can, um, again, try to track to people's strengths. And I'm going to pass it back to Diane to just kind of quickly go over some of the. I'll be very quick about this because I know we're short on time. But these are just some of the highlights of people involved. Um, Russell from Hot OSM um, has helped a lot because he's been an OSM Colorado guru for a long time. Jennings, really good with the back structure of building some of our um, flow. And we've got um, Jimmy and Chad doing server support and GitHub and hosting all of that kind of what the um, users that come to our meetups don't see, but we would fail without that help. And just people that come all the time. Patrick is awesome. Um, you might, if you know about the map porn Reddit, this is Patrick. He does that. We also have an, an other standard people that come to various different things and people that um, are on Slack that are far away back, like I said, in the western slope. We have um, people that we can communicate across our mountains that divide us by having this um, online intercommunication. And then there's us. We like dogs and trees and teaching people GIS. So. Those are, that's a quick view of people. So again, the big question really for us is, you know, we have this, like all these different folks with all these different interests and just this amazing community. And, um, and, and yet, even if you look at this progress bar on the project, we, we don't have this like, you know, amazing J curve, right. Of just like, everyone's like, woohoo, the import. And, um, and so it's been kind of a, a little bit of a thinker for us because, um, you know, we do a lot of uh, training people and then they don't come back, right? So the, the very, all those editors that came in and did more than 10 edits show up in the statistics, but they don't come back. And so, um, you know, feeling a little bit like we're spinning our wheels and this um, conference so far has been really great to help us uh, build ideas about, you um, really ways that we can track to all of these individual people's strengths, right? And I think um, one of the things maybe we've been doing wrong is just kind of casting this broad net, expecting that everyone will come and want to engage and just be all about it. And, and, and instead, I think we've done a lot of alienating people and being like, 1.5 million buildings, doesn't that sound like fun? And we're like, slowly fade into the bushes, you know? So, um, so how do we track to people's strengths and how do we like use all of this glorious uh, geo intelligence in our community to get this project done? Um, so one of the ideas that right now is truly in the idea phase as it's a, just a sketch on a piece of cardboard in the lower left-hand corner is really about matching people's skills and interests to the, the different challenging levels of the tasks. If there's a lot of buildings in OSM already, or there's multi-part buildings with different building heights, that requires a different skill level than somebody that's like, hey, I just wanted to learn about the map, and, and I don't know, I've never done it before. So, um, so that's a big piece that's circulating around with us right now. Um, and then, of course, there's always this concept of completeness. And so um, really working with our tech team to build the tools that help us actually track towards quality as our measure of completeness. Um, so that also can help with the, the, like the overwhelmingness of what is this, especially with addresses being included. Um, you know, building import even on its own is... A lot, but with the addresses. So um, all of these different tools and interactivity uh, sites that we're building up, we hope will also do a lot for the morale and the and the um, leveraging of this amazing community that we have. So uh, with that, I think we're uh, ready for some questions. If y'all have any, thank you.
somebody should just raise their hand and go, how can I help from afar on Slack? Because you can. You don't have to live in Colorado to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> right. Jimmy. Jimmy is our shining example of that. So I have a question about just how you can take what you've done here and how you would apply it to start a different community or take over another community that's not uh, as connected. Do you want to take that one about distributed communities? I guess what we're learning is even when we're fairly connected, the main thing is building a really good workflow where people can see a good entry point to what matches their skill set. And so if there's another project that's similar, um, what we can help those people that are building that is getting a really nice outline of where to enter based on your skills and reach out like start a meetup group or something and reach out to those uh, more disparate people or maybe reach people through libraries, which is where I work, different places like that. But just having a nice workflow set up. Thanks, Jimmy. All right, well, and thank all of you for coming. We're, we're around, we're not going anywhere. So if you have if something strikes you later or you just wanna chat about all the goofballs in our community, we love to, we're pretty proud of them. So come say hi. Thanks guys for coming.